Do you ever get that feeling like you're being watched? I'm working in my marine lab one night. It's dark, but I can tell that every time I move, the subject I'm studying moves too, like I'm being followed. Its eight limbs explore the darkness around it, slithering hypnotically to the rhythm of a silent orchestra. It fixes its unblinking eyes on me. And I wonder, who is studying whom? I'm currently a graduate student, and I study octopus intelligence. In the four years that I've been studying the octopus, I've experienced this encounter again and again. I'm interested in the biological origins of the mind. There's something truly humbling knowing that human intelligence and all of its potential to create and innovate is a product of evolution, like all life on Earth. Along my academic path, I began studying invertebrates. The average human doesn't know very much about invertebrates, animals that don't have a spine or internal skeleton as we have. Yet the invertebrates make up over 95% of animal life. So it turns out we vertebrates, we are the weird ones. I spent a summer in the San Juan Islands at Friday Harper Labs, where I had an opportunity to study an incredible diversity of invertebrates. There were tanks of urchins, sea cucumbers, sea slugs, crustaceans, anemones, shellfish, and lots of worms. Most of these animals didn't seem to mind or notice my presence. Only one animal was observing me back. The octopus was uniquely aware of its surroundings. I was fascinated by the way it moved, by its ability to coordinate its multiple jointless limbs so fluidly and so elegantly and by its ability to change its color and texture to match its surroundings. When this animal died, I looked at its skin under a microscope so I can see the elements of its camouflage abilities. It was like looking at a landscape of another planet or another dimension. Then, the skin woke up. The octopus had died hours ago but its skin was moving, changing in waves of color before my eyes. The skin was alive. The octopus's body and mind seemed worlds apart from our own and that of our vertebrate kin. The octopus became a unique lens through which I could study the mind. This path has reframed my understanding of human intelligence and how we perceive and think about the world. I had wandered into the rabbit hole, but this animal is not a rabbit. Far from it. The octopus is like nothing else I've ever encountered. Octopuses don't have a skeleton. Their movement is therefore not bound by any kind of rigidity. Their arms can bend anywhere in any direction. The octopus can't rely on its arms being shaped the same way twice. This means, unlike other animals, the octopus lacks rhythmic pattern to its locomotion. On each of its arms, it has hundreds of suckers. Where the eight arms meet is where its beak is. The octopus has a beak, by the way. The bag behind its eyes is its body where you'll find its organs, like its kidneys, its three hearts, and its stomach. The octopus has three hearts, by the way. They're full of fun facts. Before I talk about their brain, let's talk about ours. Our brain sits in our skulls and is highly centralized. The human brain is an immense concentration of neurons. It's a complex circuit capable of complex thought. It gives us incredible abilities to process and understand the world around us. The octopus's cognition is quite different. 
it's distributed. Most of its brain exists within its arms. The octopus relies on this distributed nervous system to be able to control its body. There are so many different ways for the arms to move that the brain would be overloaded if it was solely responsible for controlling them. Instead, the octopus relies on local control centers within its arms. The arms are therefore very independent. The arms and suckers can interact with the world around them with minimal feedback from the brain. You can think of the relationship between the octopus and its arms like our relationship with our technology, like our phones or our computers or our cars, which are all growing smarter by the day. They think about things so we don't have to. But this also means that there's a lot that they are thinking about that we are unaware of. I study how the arms and suckers work together to gather information from their environment, how they cooperate to explore and to solve problems. As a diver, I also spend a fair bit of time underwater trying to find them. But the octopus is an animal that evolved to not be found. With their incredible camouflage abilities, an octopus might appear as no more than a piece of kelp lined with suckers or a rock with eyes. I have likely been observed by many animals on dives when I did not see a single one. It is a humbling ritual visiting their remote world. The cold, dark, green water of the Pacific Northwest and my limited air supply seem to compound this feeling. My years of studying the octopus have felt like the study of an alien life form. But strangely, over time, I began to feel an uncanny sense of kinship with them. The unnerving feeling, like I was always being watched, eventually turned into a feeling of comfort. Like we are two otherworldly creatures mirroring each other's behavior. As I studied and observed them, they always seemed to be doing the same thing back to me. They are marvelously curious animals. When they are awake and active, they constantly wander and watch me and reach their arms into unseen corners of their tank. If they're not given something to do, something to enrich them, to stimulate them, they become very unhappy and unhealthy. They explore mostly with their arms and suckers, where they keep most of their brain. A single sucker has tens of thousands of mechanical and chemical receptors that it uses to feel and taste the, its surroundings and the world around it. A single sucker is a hundred times more sensitive than a human fingertip. Each sucker can coordinate with its neighbors to crawl, to explore, and manipulate objects. To study the octopus, I give them problem-solving tasks, then analyze how they solve them. It's an opportunity for them to satisfy their curiosity while I have a chance to satisfy mine. It's an opportunity to meet them halfway. But I'll also give them toys, prey to find and hunt, and objects with unique textures like rocks or shells or even Legos. A healthy and confident animal will investigate pretty much anything we add to their tanks. When they reach out for me, when we make contact, their quasi-intelligent limbs explore my skin with hundreds of coordinated, sensitive suckers. I'm making contact with their body, but it feels like I'm making contact with their mind. There is still so much to learn about these animals. And with each new discovery, we learn more of what it would be like to meet and understand a completely different form of intelligence. And who knows, that might be a future for us one day. My goal is to not just understand their mind as a machine or a computer, but to be able to read them, to empathize with them, and to comprehend their experience of the world as an entirely different form of thought. I didn't expect to form such a bond with animals that seemed so alien.
to be invested in an animal that is so different and so difficult to understand is an incredible emotional challenge. To finally build trust with such an animal is a very rewarding experience. This has become more than just an academic path for me. Studying the octopus has radically changed my perspective on the human mind. These mysterious and complex creatures have shown me that the human mind is just one of many possible forms of intelligence. At the end of the day, their curiosity and their drive to explore always remind me of why I do this work. How incredible that this feeling of curiosity is shared across the ancient evolutionary divide between us. This feeling was so important for us and our progress as a species. It led the way for human discovery and innovation. It has led us across the world and will one day lead us beyond. It was fundamental to technology and civilization and has led the way to pursuing the greatest mysteries of the universe. When we turn our gaze to the stars and to worlds beyond our own, when we wonder what alien forms of life are evolving in the universe around us, I would guess that someone, somewhere, is wondering the same thing. Despite our differences, what will bring us together will be our shared pursuit of the unknown. Thank you.